My name is Ethan Feinschreiber, and I have a passion for educating the world about snakes. One of the most fascinating things to see in the swamps of southern Louisiana is how a huge plethora of reptiles can live comfortably in a habitat that's often flooded and has no real ground to burrow into without drowning. One of the best examples of these reptiles I can think of is the western ribbon snake. Whether it was sunny, cloudy, or even rainy, these snakes were out in full force. Catching them is also much easier said than done. Oh! Oh, yes, but I knew I would have plenty of other chances to catch one. Oh, I actually that, tripped. Like, or two. Days were like my brother's been There's two! Once. Or three. Maybe, I think I already caught this one. Ow! You just that let me pick him up. Biggest. You get the idea. Let's talk about the western ribbon snake. There are multiple ribbon snake species throughout the US, and this right here is the western ribbon snake. There are many different species and subspecies of ribbon snake. Some are really pretty, some are actually blue, some are red. If you want to tell the difference between a garter snake and a ribbon snake, what you want to look for is a white blotch just in front of their eye there, and the fact that these guys are very, very slender. Um, that is basically the main thing that you can tell. They're a bit more slender than garter snakes, and that is how you tell a ribbon snake from a garter snake. And they're found throughout all of the eastern United States. What do they eat? Well, they mostly eat what garter snakes eat. They eat slugs, worms, but because ribbon snakes are so good at swimming, they also will not hesitate to eat fish, crayfish. They'll eat uh, a lot of other small things. Um, these are live-bearing species. So not all snakes lay eggs. In fact, ribbon snakes are live bearing just like all other ribbon and garter snakes. Thank you guys so much for watching and taking the time to educate yourself on the western ribbon snake. I'll see you next time with possibly an even cooler snake. No matter how many of these we could find, it never got old knowing I couldn't predict where I was going to see one next. And there was always the potential that we'd see one that would be more big and beautiful than the last. They hold a special place in my heart and help keep this swampy ecosystem healthy. If you enjoyed this episode of Snakes on the Brain, let me know by giving this video a like, and if you want to learn about other snakes I've caught, make sure to subscribe. So I had just filmed an episode. Oh, I have... Ugh. Stop musking!